It's a great pleasure and honour to introduce um, the manager of one of the greatest bands in the world, Paul McGuinness. Good afternoon and thank you for inviting me. What I'm here to do is to try and identify a course of action um, that will benefit all artists, labels, writers and publishers. Um, the title, The Online Bonanza, who is making all the money and why aren't they sharing it, kind of will give you an idea of what, I, what I'm going to say. Um, there's a lot of money in the music business, um, but it has stopped flowing to the artists. Um, I've been managing the best known of my clients, you two, for exactly 30 years. Um, we've made some mistakes along the way, but the lineup hasn't changed in 31 years. They're as ambitious and hardworking as ever, and each time they make a record and a tour, it's better than the last time. You two always understood that it would be pathetic to be good at the music and bad at the business, and have always been prepared to invest in their own future. We were never interested in joining that long, humiliating list of miserable artists who'd made lousy deals, got exploited, ended up broke, with no control over how their life's work was used and how their names and likenesses were bought and sold. I'm here to ask some serious questions and to point the finger at the forces at work that are destroying the recorded music industry. People all over the world are going to more gigs than ever. The experience for the audience is better than ever. This is proved by the upward trend in ticket prices, generally unresisted. The live business is, for the most part, healthy and profitable. Bags, bands can gig without subsidy. Live Nation, previously a concert and venue company, is moving into position with merchandising, ticketing, online, music distribution, as one of the powerful new centers of the music industry. So what, what's been going wrong with the recorded music business? More people are listening to music than ever before through many more media. Part of the problem is that the record companies, through lack of foresight and poor planning, allowed an entire collection of industries to arise that enabled the consumer to steal with impunity the very recorded music that had been previously been paid for. There is one effective thing the majors could do together. Um, there's an interesting article re recently in Time magazine by Josh Tarangle. Um, he said, the smartest thing would be for the majors to collaborate on the creation of the ultimate digital distribution hub, a place where every band can sell its wares at the price point of its choosing. Apple's iTunes, despite its current dominance, is vulnerable. Consumers dislike its incompatibility with other music services, and the labels are rebelling against its insistence on controlling prices. Universal, the largest label in the world, has declined to sign a long-term deal with iTunes. And then Rick Rubin was quoted. He said, there's a real urgency for the labels to get together and figure this out. And that common business-to-business -business, um, distribution hub, I think, is a, a, an urgent priority. There's, you know, there are various proposed technologies for that that the world industry could adopt. One of them is in use here at, um, at MEDEM, by the MEDEM organization. It's called SIMRAN. Today, there is a bigger issue, and it's about the whole relationship between the music and the technology business. Network operators in particular have, for far too long, had a completely free ride on music, on our clients' content. It's time for a new approach. It's time for ISPs to start taking responsibility for the content they've profited from for years. And it's time for some visionary new thinking about how the music and technology sectors can work as partners instead of adversaries, leading to a revival of recording of recorded music instead of its destruction. I've met a lot of today's heroes of Silicon Valley. Most of them don't really think of themselves as makers of burglary kits. 
These tech guys think of themselves as political, liberals, and socially aware. They search constantly for the next killer app. They conveniently forget that the real killer app that many of their businesses are founded on is our clients' recorded music. There are a great variety of companies and individuals who I'm grouping together in this, this kind of general accusation. I call on them today to start doing two things. First of all, they have to take responsibility for protecting the music they're distributing. And second, they have to make a genuine effort um, through commercial agreements to share these enormous revenues with the content makers and owners. I want these technology entrepreneurs to share their ingenuity and skill as well as their money. It is time for the ISPs to be real partners. The safe harbors of the 1990s are no longer appropriate, and if ISPs do not cooperate voluntarily, there will need to be legislation to require them to cooperate. The research does show that effective enforcement, like a series of warnings from an ISP to an illegal file sharer that would culminate in disconnection, can address the problem. A simple three strikes and you're out enforcement process will see all serial illegal uploaders who resist the law face a stark choice, change or lose your ISP subscription. ISPs don't just have a moral reason to step up to the plate. They have a commercial one as well. Um, there are businesses to be built on cooperation. IFPI estimates um, that illegal P2P distribution in music and films accounts for over half of all ISP traffic. Others put the figure as high as 80%. This is traffic that is not only destroying the marketplace for people who are trying to make a legitimate living out of music and films, it's hogging bandwidth that ISPs are increasingly going to need for other commerce, especially as um, a legitimate market develops for movie downloads. I think the failure of the ISPs to engage in the fight against piracy to date has been the biggest single failure in the digital music market. They are the gatekeepers with the technical means to make a far greater impact on mass copyright violation than the tens of thousands of lawsuits taken out against individual file sharers by bodies like BPI, RIAA, and IFPI. ISPs could implement a policy of disconnection in a very quick time. Filtering is also possible. Um, they've been ma making excuses that these things were not doable for such a long time um, that we're sick of it. They can do it. For me, the business model of the future is the one where the music is bundled into an ISP or other subscription service and the revenues are shared between the distributor and the content owners. I do believe this is realistic. The last few years have shown clear proof of the power um, of ISPs and cable companies to bundle packages of content and get more money out of their subscribers. I think it's time to get serious about this and identify, um, identify the enemy, um, who's got our money, and what can we do about it. I suggest we shift the, forest of the focus of moral pressure away from the in individual um, P2P file thief and onto the multi-billion dollar industries that benefit from these countless tiny crimes. This is a gathering of managers and our talented clients deserve better than the shoddy, careless and downright dishonest way in which they've been treated in the digital age. Thank you.